And we're back with yet another episode of the QGIS Road to Nirvana. This is episode 24, Using Aggregate Expressions for Biodiversity Mapping. I'm Tim Sutton and I'm going to be showing you some workflows for how we can map biodiversity data and make some interesting visualizations with them. So I've done a little preparation before starting this uh, video. I've prepared a geo package and inside of it I have two data sets. One is um, a coastline data set for St. Lucia, and, uh, which you can see in green over here. And the other is a data set of biodiversity occurrence data from GBIF, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. I downloaded the GBIF data using a plugin here called the Occurrences plugin. You can find it in the plugin manager. The GBIF for Occurrences plugin, and you simply can choose a country and then download the data for the country, or there's a whole bunch of other search criteria you can use. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a grid overlay over the top of St. Lucia, um, and those will be in a hex grid format, so um, six-sided polygons, basically a, a, an arrangement of them that covers the whole island, and then I'm going to be binning or um, collating the data for these points within those polygons. So let's jump it right in. First of all, I'm going to use the vector menu here and go and look in the research tools and use this create grid function here to create my grid. And I want to make a hexagon grid and I'm going to use the extent of uh, the coastline layer here to determine the region that should be gridded. And then I'm going to use a size of 1000 by 1000, in other words, one kilometer by one kilometer for the grid cells. And then I'm going to write this grid data into my geo package. Okay, and we're going to call it um, hex underscore grid. Okay, and then we're ready to run here. When we run it, what we get is a new layer created, which is um, arranged in these one kilometer by one kilometer ish, more or less, um, uh, tiles. But the tiles are in covering the whole bounding box for St. Lucia. So there's parts of um, the tile set that, that we don't want because we don't want the ocean parts. So I'm going to do a quick spatial selection to go and remove the ones that are not covering the land. So um, we'll do select by location from the expression uh, from the processing toolbox here. And we simply choose the hex grid as the layer that we want to select features from. And we choose intersect or are within uh, for the spatial predicate and coastline for um, the features that it should be compared to. And then we're going to create a new selection. And then we click. Uh, press run and now you can see all of the ones that are coincident with the coastline data set are now selected. Now I'm going to invert the selection so that the, the opposite is true that the ones that are not within St. Lucia are selected and then simply edit the layer and delete those selected items. And that will give me with uh, give me a new data set which is uh, matched to the, the land mass of St. Lucia. I really don't like this pink, so I'm just going to quickly go and choose a different <laughs> color for my hex grid. Okay. I'm just going to save my project as it works so that if I have a crash or something, I can recover from it. All right. Now, the next step is we want to bin or um, collate or aggregate the um, point data that is on the land with uh, into these... Um, uh, grid cells. Now, uh, to make the processing more efficient, I want to just select out the cells which have a point overlaying them. So I'm going to go back to that same select by location tool. And now this time I'm going to select the features from the hex grid, which um, uh, are intersecting with the biodiversity data. And uh, we run that and then we get all the cells which have got actually points over the top of them. And this will just help me speed up the processing because I won't try to be considering cells which don't have biodiversity data over them when I run the 
um, next step, which is going to be to compute the number of taxa that occur in each of these cells. To do that, I'm going to use the field calculator here. I'm going to create a new field and call it taxon count. And I'm going to create a, an aggregate expression to um, work out how many of these uh, of the occurrence points are in each cell. So I've prepared it already. I'll just give you a quick walkthrough of how the expression works. I just need to replace this layer here with an actual layer reference. So let's just go to here and choose the biodiversity layer. Okay, so basically what the expression does is it says aggregate, which means uh, group together and you know collate or sum up. Um, data from the biodiversity layer using uh, the aggregate function count distinct so that means we want to know how many uh, unique um, points there are based on the taxon key which is the species the, the organisms um, type so count how many unique organisms basically and then the clever part here is um, applying this filter so it will compute this for each of those cells and then do a, a spatial operation to find just the um, the cells from the geometry, which is the point layer here, that are within the geometry of the parent. Okay. If you want to know more about um, how to construct these, there's a very very good blog by Ujval Gandhi called um, SpatialThoughts.com, and um, uh, he's got a whole lot of tutorials showing you how to actually compose uh, aggregate queries. We're just going to validate it to see that it works here and I'm going to make sure that we've got these selected features only enabled here so that we don't calculate this for non-selected features. So if I click on this little uh, next previous feature um, widget here you can see that in the preview it shows me the count for each of the cells. Okay, You can see it takes a second or two to calculate each one because it is a bit computationally intensive what, the way that this aggregate runs. Um, so we're going to say OK and let it run and it might take a minute or two to go and um, fetch everything.
Okay, so the analysis took a few minutes, but um, it's going to an end. And what we should have at the end of the process is this new column in the taxon, uh, in the hex grid layer, which has got the taxon count. So I'm just going to save my edits here. And then look in the layer, and you can see these are all the ones that had some points overlaying with them, and you can see they've now been assigned with the value of the number of unique organisms that occur in that hex grid cell. All right, so now we've got some interesting data. I'm just going to save the project again. I'm going to turn off the bees, remove the selection, like that. And then the first thing we can do is go to the layer styling and apply a nice style to show um, the difference between the biodiversity levels on each of these cells. So to do that, I'll use a graduated renderer. I'm going to set the, um, the value for the renderer to the taxon count field. And we're going to choose a color ramp. We'll use the spectral one. I'm going to invert it. And then we'll use the uh, Jenks natural breaks mode to classify the data set. And I'm going to make sure that the, the bottom bucket is is just sort of on its own with 0 to 1. So I'm just going to add a couple more classes here. And then I'm going to go and edit this one over here to make it start from 1. You'll see that it will automatically update the preceding class as well. So that now shows 0 to 1. All right. So we've got a nice visualization. We can see here that these are the biodiverse rich areas here yeah, along the coast and a little bit inland and then um, these blue areas are areas with very low biodiversity um, and then the green ones are ones where uh, there are let me just see Okay, so we've actually got these holes in the in the data set here where there are actually no values or nulls assigned um, to those ones. All right, and then what we can do is we can also do another analysis where we count the number of occurrence points. So that's not the distinct uh, organisms, but just the total number of points occurring in each of these cells. So to do that, we can use a much faster approach. We can use this processing tool and we can search for points, um, uh, points inside polygons, count points in polygon. And so with this one, we just pass the polygon layer, we pass the points layer, and then we're going to give it a name for the field. And we're going to once again write this output data set into a geo package. And then call this occurrence counts. Okay, and you'll see that runs very quickly compared to the other one. Um, and what it's done is created another new data set. So now we've got the hex grid, which we can actually rename to call it biodiversity counts or taxon counts. And then we've got this one here, which if we look at the data set, you'll see it's got this new column added to it, which is the number of occurrence points in each cell. And we can follow the same process to go and style it. Graduate it, and this time we're going to use this occurrence count column. And um, we are going to use the same spectral ramp and we'll invert it. We'll use the same Jenks natural breaks here and do the same thing that we did before where we changed this first class to start from one. Okay. So one difference is that this one doesn't have um, those null records excluded from the um, from the classification because uh, I think it, it scores them as zero for the ones that are null or that had no counts in it. Okay, great. We'll just save the project. Now, um, so here we can see that the difference between the 
the amount of species and the amount of collections um, you can see the areas which are not so species rich where they've been doing a lot of collecting and then areas which are species rich like these where there's not much collecting been happening so that's already interesting in its own right just to look at it like that but what we're going to do is we're going to go and make a layout and we're going to use some additional aggregate queries to build a little dashboard showing the kind of general state of affairs on the, on the map so i'll create a new layout Called a biodiversity report, and close this window again. Right, and then the first thing we'll do on the layout is we're going to add a new map widget. I'll take approximately half the page for that. And inside that widget, we've got our map, and I'm going to go and set the scale to one to two hundred fifty thousand, which will fill that frame nicely. Now. Um, it could get a bit confusing to know which data set we're looking at. So what I want to do is I want to lock these layers in here so that these are locked to the um, occurrence count. And then we're going to create a second page, um, which um, we can just do over here. And we're going to copy the same frame over. And in this case, we're going to we're going to make it um, have the the taxon count. So the first one is the collection count or occurrence count. So I need to unlock these layers and then switch back to QGIS and hide the first and show the second. I'll leave it with the coastline in the background just so that it's also clearer to see. All right, and then we can switch back to here and then lock those layers again. So. Um, Okay. okay, so now we can see the two different um, types of report are being shown and whatever I do in the map, those will always be showing that combination of layers and their styles. All right, let's put some content on, onto our map. So uh, the first thing I'm going to be doing is adding a text box over here. I'm going to just put a title. And... Um, some prepared text here that we can put in and then we're going to just go and style it so I'll center it in the middle and horizontally we'll choose a bigger font um, I'll just choose uh, something like that and put it at 20 points like that okay and then um, maybe we can put a couple extra lines and we'll change this to um, GBIF something like that Okay, so we've got a title for the map and we can again copy this title down to um, the second layout and this one is going to be, um, going to change this to uh, taxon counts per cell, something like that. Okay, so we've got our two headings and then what we want to do is we want to put some summaries in here. So. Uh, the first one that I'm going to do is just to get a uh, count of the total number of uh, currents records here. So I'm going to make like a little um, kind of stylized box over here. I'm going to put it in a very big font. Let's just put it that as a placeholder and get the appearance sorted out. So um, we'll do it like this and we'll make it like really, we'll go big, we'll go like... Um, 256 or something like that, really make it big. Okay. Um, I think it's a little bit too big, so I'm just going to shrink it down a bit, maybe make it 180. Okay. And then again, we're going to center that in the middle and horizontally. Okay. And then I'm going to put underneath that a little um, box of the same size. 
Um, but in this one, I'm going to use a smaller font. So I'm going to go drop this down to, let's say, 64 or something like that. And um, yeah, we can put an actual title. So we can say Currents Records. Okay, that font is still too big, so it's going to drop it down by half again. Okay, and then the font is also too bold now. So we're going to go make this just uh, regular like that. Okay, so we've got 110 occurrence records. We could put some frames around these things. Um, and this one here. And then just line them up like that. Okay, and then I might just invert this one here so that it comes uh, through as black on that side. And the font we can put to white. Okay. Great, now I can copy this whole thing over and just put it down here as well. And this one is going to be the number of unique taxes, so we'll just change the, um, the text here. Let's make sure I put the right box selected. Okay, and then um, I actually need to put the logic in to change this one on one to something more meaningful. So to do that I'm going to insert an expression and this time I'm going to use an aggregate expression like I did before but not counting distinct. I'm just going to do the total count for this one. So, um, uh, so I'll make a new aggregate and then we're going to select that layer again, the biodiversity layer. And then we're going to say the aggregate should be should be equal to, and here we're going to say it should be the count of the records in that layer. And we're going to say that we want to count based on, it doesn't actually matter what we count in any field, but um, we'll do um, based on the taxon key, which is just one of the fields that I know is in the data set. Taxon key. Um, and then, and that should be in double quotes because that's the field name. All right, and you can see at the bottom here that it's actually summed up um, the total number of current records. There is one gotcha that this is actually the total number of records terrestrially and um, in the sea, but I'm not going to try to fix that for now. Um, I'll just put a, a note underneath um, saying that it's sort of in and around St. Lucia. So. Um, so we'll put a little text box underneath here just saying count um, like that just to clarify what the count means exactly all right and then um, uh, the last thing we want to do is add a legend so we're going to add a legend at the bottom now this thing is still a bit too big for my layout so I'm going to go just drop the size down again by another notch here space to put the legend above. Right, so I'm below, sorry. So let's put the legend in now. Um, I don't think we're going to need to put a qualifier into this one, so I won't copy it there. So let's add the legend. Just drop it in over here like this. And we're going to modify the way that it's being rendered. So we're going to remove all the layers except for the occurrence count layer. OK. 
Okay, and then I'm going to go and customize the way that it's being drawn. So the first thing I want to do is I want to customize the patch. By default, we just get this rectangle patch, um, which you can see uh, next to each item here. But I want the patch to match the style of the map. So I'm going to go back to my main window here, select one of these polygons. Uh, so let's make sure I'm on the right layer there. Copy that to my clipboard and then go uh, go back to the, the window here, paste it in and then just strip out everything except the polygon um, that you can see over here. And the bit after the polygon also needs to get stripped out. Okay, and so what that will do is it will um, change the, the icon next to each legend entry to a nice polygon shape. All right, and then I'm just going to make it kind of a bigger like this. Okay, and um, I want to remove this text over here and just make a few more settings. I'm going to tell it to spread it over three columns. Um, let's see. Um, sure, uh, so we can say also split layers, that's fine. Like that. And. Um, there we go. So we've got the nice legend for um, for the map, and uh, we could maybe just modify this text here to say um, uh, something like that. Just to make it clear what the legend below is for. All right, and so um, let's do the second part of the report, which is the, the taxon counts. So we're going to come down here, and this time um, we want to count not just the um, uh, all the, all the records, but all the the unique ones. So we can just copy this one as a basis for the expression and paste it in here again and this time we're going to say count underscore unique okay um, let's see if I broke something I'm just going to go check it in the expression editor to see if I can see why it's not Showing there, so um, does look alright. Count, uh, sorry, it should be count distinct, not count unique. If you're wondering how I know that, you can go to um, you can go to the aggregates here and look at aggregate, and you get a list of all of the different um, functions. Yeah, so you can see there's count distinct. Okay. All right, and again, that font is a bit big, so we're going to just bring it down and make it one twenty. And I just want to make this one match so that they're both the same. Oh, that one's already been shrunk down to ninety-two, so let's make this ninety-two as well. Okay, and then we're going to just um, copy these two elements here and put them over here so that they've got the same uh, look to the layout. We can shrink this down a bit. Move that up there. This one we can say um, that it's terrestrial only. And then uh, this one we can say taxon count. And the one above we might want to clarify and say occurrence count. Okay. 
Right, then I just need to shift this content up a little bit because it's a bit too low down. There we go. And then the last thing we need to do is just um, sort out this legend. So before I go and change anything, I'm just going to go back in here and just put in my clipboard this patch shape. Um, and then I'm going to go and actually um, see going to go and enable auto update and then disable it again and I'm going to remove these oopsie let's try that again and remove those three ones there and then go to here and edit this edit the patch replace the polygon set this to 10 and 10 so let me go back in here and check this box over here. Okay, we can remove this label and that's looking pretty good. Oh wait, let me just go try and remove that label again. Put a space in there. Let's see how that looks. And that's it. That's how to make a very quick, easy biodiversity assessment um, using just QGIS and uh, some simple starting blocks of a country outline or an area outline and with, uh, with very minimal effort you can make a rich and interesting report and, uh, and then we can obviously go print that out and make a PDF of it and share it to your, <laughs> your colleagues and, and so on. And the main idea is that you can see some of the use cases for aggregate, aggregate expressions and how you might want to apply them to your own work. So um, let's just generate that report to wrap up. And here's our final report. So I hope that was interesting for you. Thank you for watching and um, we look forward to catching you on the next one. Happy nerding everybody.